Hey guys, welcome back to my fantasy football podcast, week two edition. I hope you guys enjoyed week one. I did. It was super fun to watch the Sunday slate and the Monday game and then the Thursday game this past week for the start of week two. I hope you guys won all your fantasy football matchups, but if you didn't, I'm glad that you are here to listen to my podcast this week, and I hope you're there for the live tomorrow. I hope you were there last week. We had a good show and got up to over 30,000 people in the live, over 4,000 people at one point, so definitely make sure you join my live tomorrow because I'm even more confident about my weekly picks and weekly sit this week so make sure to tune in for that and of course if you guys want to message me want to improve your fantasy football team by making trades or setting your lineup or picking up free agents or using your waiver you could definitely message me over on the patreon you guys probably have heard me mention it before but go over to the patreon it's a link in our bio and that's where you could join one of our tiers to join our membership community and basically be able to get access to my answers and I'll literally look through your team, see your screenshots and help you improve your team and set your lineup. So definitely do that. But as far as this show, this podcast today, it's going to be pretty short again, but I'm going to be talking about injuries. A lot happened in week one in terms of injuries, and I'm going to talk about how those injuries impact the fantasy football landscape for week two. So the first three players I'm going to start with are players that have already been ruled out two of them for a long period of time, one of them just for this week so far. But I'm going to talk about how they, their injuries affect the fantasy football landscape and how their injuries affect some backups that might come into their position and what that means for all the fantasy players, you know, in that vicinity who are interacting with that player. And then I'm going to talk about some players that are questionable for this week and what you should do if they play or don't play this week. So the first guy I'm going to talk about, you guys, probably a lot of you had them. I know I was messaging you uh, you guys a lot about him. Dak Prescott, he obviously broke his thumb. He's out for the next six to eight weeks. Jerry Jones didn't put him on IR, so they're hoping he's closer to four to six weeks he's going to be out. So Cooper Rush is playing his spot, and a lot of people are really panicking about CeeDee Lamb and Dalton Schultz. I wouldn't panic just yet. I think they're both going to have good games this week, Dalton Schultz especially. He's on my list to potentially be a weekly pick this week. I kind of get a notes in my notes app. I get a list going throughout the week of who could potentially be a weekly pick or weekly sit. Dalton Schultz is currently on that list, so we'll see if he makes the list tomorrow, so tune in for that, but I do think Dalton Schultz will have a good game because the Cowboys are playing the Bengals, and the Bengals are probably going to be able to put up a lot of points, which means the Cowboys will have to throw, so I like Dalton Schultz, who could be a security blanket for Cooper Rush to get a lot of points, and don't forget last season when Cooper Rush started for Dak Prescott, Amari Cooper had over 100 yards and a touchdown, so I wouldn't count out C.D. Lamb for this game either. If you guys do feel that you want to trade C.D. Lamb, away, I would be open to that, but make sure you get a good price for him. Don't sell him too low. If you're thinking about trading away Dalton Schultz, I would highly advise against not doing that. I really like Dalton Schultz for the whole season, even with Dak not there. I think even for the next month or two, Dalton Schultz could still be a great fantasy option with Cooper Rush there. So in terms of this this week, I would still start CeeDee Lamb unless you have great options other than him. Dalton Schultz, you're definitely starting this week. Cooper Rush, I probably wouldn't stream him this week. Um, So if you have Dak, you probably want to get into some other options. One of the guys I've been mentioning and recommending to people is Jameis Winston. He had a pretty good game week one. Week two, he actually gets a really tough matchup against the Buccaneers, and I don't think he's going to have a great game in that one. I think it's going to be low scoring. But after that, the next few weeks after that, Winston does have favorable matchups. So definitely take a look at him if you want to pick him up and put him in your leagues. And in terms of Taysom Hill, He has quarterback eligibility, tight end eligibility. I'll talk about him and the Saints running backs in in a little bit. But first, I want to mention that Dalton Schultz, I would definitely keep him on your team and start him this week. The second guy already ruled out is Chris Godwin for this week with a hamstring injury. We saw him pull up late in the game last week. I mean, I think, like I said, that Saints-Bucks game is going to be pretty low scoring. So I would try, I already didn't like Brady or Evans in that game because they typically don't do well against the Saints. Brady, since he'd been on the Bucks, four games against the Saints, four losses. So it's tough for Brady to beat the Saints. This defense has his number. So I would be careful about Brady and Evans. If you wanted to take a guy and put him in, some deep sleeper guy, it could be Russell Gage. Um, stay tuned for my live to see he was limited in practice this week it seems like he's going to play but he's the only guy that I guess I would be comfortable uh, starting as a sleeper Mike Evans and Brady you might have to start I would probably try not to put them in your lineup if you can help it because 
Again, the Saints play them pretty tough. And then the third guy is Elijah Mitchell. He hurt his MCL. He's going to be out for eight weeks. He seems like a pretty injury-prone prone guy. So it's actually good news for Debo Samuel. Hopefully he'll get some more rushes. But also Jeff Wilson is now the starting running back. But <clears throat> don't get too excited about Wilson because we know Shanahan loves to to – rotate those running backs in and when asked about their running back situation Shanahan said I'm going to use the hot hand so that's actually really bad news for owners of Jeff Wilson but as in terms of this week against the Seahawks who had a really bad run defense last season and let Javante Williams get 11 catches this past week I would throw Jeff Wilson into your lineups this week try to get him into your lineups he's not a must start but he's definitely a solid start this week and going forward maybe a guy you want to pick up is Trey uh da um that the other the rookie for the 49ers I forget what his name is but it's like Davis Price or something like that so definitely pick him up because what if you know Shanahan comes out and says all right Wilson we're not even going to give it to you at all he's known to do that so you want to pick up all those 49ers running backs just in case Shanahan changes it up on us and now moving into players that are questionable for this T Higgins with a concussion last week we saw that happen he got in limited practice this week he should play if he does play get him into your lineup because the Cowboys pass defense is not great I don't think that's going to be a crazy high scoring game but T Higgins against the Cowboys their secondary is not great definitely put him in if you can Michael Pitt Pittman is also questionable. He was limited in practice Wednesday, didn't practice Thursday. He's got a quad injury, so he he really might not play this week. And also Alec Pierce, another wide receiver for the Colts, was deemed out for this week. So the other guys there are Ashton Doolin, Paris Campbell. I honestly think if Pittman were to sit, the biggest beneficiary would be Naheem Hines. He had six catches last week, and the Colts are playing the Jaguars, so they're probably going to be leading the game probably going to be rushing the ball, not taking too many chances downfield. So I think Hines could get some rushes, maybe five to 10 carries and also get five to 10 catches. So, I mean, Hines would only be viable in a 12 or 14 man if Pittman didn't play. But if Pittman doesn't play, Naheem Hines could be an option as well. So keep that in mind. And then, like I said, I wanted to talk about the Saints running backs and Taysom Hill because a lot of people are talking about Taysom Hill now that a lot of tight ends in week one didn't have good weeks, one of them being Cole Komet. I mean, I would give Komet another chance, another couple chances, because that game was in the pouring rain. It was... It was tough for anybody to get fantasy points in that game. Debo had a touchdown, but outside of that, he wasn't really effective. David Montgomery wasn't effective. Mitchell got hurt. So give people the benefit of the doubt in that game. I would get, give Komet another chance. But if you're asking about Taysom Hill, I like Taysom Hill this week, and I'll get to why. And the reason is because Alvin Kamara and Mark Ingram are both questionable. Uh, Kamara with a rib injury and Ingram with ankle injuries. Kamara was limited in practice Wednesday, didn't practice Thursday or Friday, and Ingram was limited all week. So I actually like Taysom Hill for this game if you want to throw him in your tight end spot. In terms of quarterback spot, if since Dak is is out, if you're putting Taysom Hill in your quarterback spot, I would not do that. I'd, I'd rather you put in somebody like Trevor Lawrence or somebody like that, Justin Fields, because I don't think Taysom Hill will get that much work. And even if he does against the Bucs, even if Kamara doesn't play and Ingram is there but still banged up, the Bucs have a great run defense. So it's not like Taysom Hill is going to go off um, in terms of being able to get enough points to play like a Trevor Lawrence in fantasy football, getting 18 to 20 fantasy points. So, But in terms of a longer-term prospect, I think Taysom Hill could be a good stash, especially since he has that quarterback tight end eligibility. And you could stash him on your bench in case your tight end spot goes weak or in case Kamara and Ingram keep getting hurt because we saw Taysom Hill be used inside the five-yard line. So definitely possible. <clears throat> Kamara monitors status. If he does play, I would even consider not starting him only because – he didn't practice Thursday or Friday, and he might not get that much work. And even if he does, like I said, the Bucks have a great run defense. So consider sitting Kamara this week. Check back tomorrow for my live show. I'll be talking about Kamara for sure. Could be on my weekly sit list. I don't know. I'm going to have to monitor the reports tonight and through tomorrow morning. And then George Kittle obviously didn't play last week in week one. His first practice of the season was actually yesterday on Friday. He's a game-time decision. I wouldn't start him tomorrow against the Seahawks. I know last year against the Seahawks he had like over 120 yards or something like that. I probably wouldn't start him um, unless you can help it. I mean, if you have tight ends on your roster that are not good, if, you, if you're deciding between Kittle and Taysom Hill, I mean, if Kamara doesn't play, then I'd, pl I'd put Hill in. If Kamara plays, I'd put Kittle in. But things like that. I'd be careful about Kittle. But you might not have that opportunity to put somebody else in, so then you can go with Kittle uh, there. 
Uh, two more guys that are questionable probably will play. The reports show that they probably will play Najee Harrison, DeAndre Swift. Swift was limited in practice, practiced on Friday, actually, ankle injury. I'm confident about him. He had a great week one, plays the Commanders this week. I'm expecting another big week, 15, 20 fantasy points, maybe more than that. Najee Harris, he has a foot injury, and actually, I think it's right in the bottom middle of his foot, and for him to be playing on this injury, it's not good. He shouldn't be playing on this injury. It's against the Patriots. I don't think Najee's going to have a great week. It's tough for you to sit him because he could get eight catches. He could get a touchdown, get two touchdowns at the goal line. So it's tough to sit Najee. But if you guys didn't see my post and you're listening to this right now, go back on TikTok, maybe 10, 15 videos back where I say the running back that's being drafted in the top five in fantasy football that you should not draft. And it is Najee Harris. So hopefully if you're listening to this, you don't have Najee. But if you do, go check out that video because I basically say that running backs that have over 400 implied touches in a season, the next season, they really don't do that well. And Najee had over 400 implied touches last season. So <clears throat> statistics and history say that he won't have a good season this year. Hopefully he doesn't get hurt, but he already has this foot injury that's not good that he's playing on. And it seems like he's you know, adamant about playing in the, this week against the Patriots. So be careful with him in the longer term. Maybe try to trade him. But those are the, that's the injury landscape for this week. Wanted to keep it short and concise. If you have any questions, message me over on the Patreon asking me um, about setting your lineup, trade advice, improving your team. And if you want some updates on these players as we get closer to Sunday and game time, join my live on TikTok on Sunday, 11.45 a.m. Eastern time until 12.45 a, uh, p.m. Eastern time, one hour long. And catch my weekly picks, weekly sits, and see which one of these guys is in my weekly picks or weekly sits this week. So thank you guys for tuning in. And as always, enjoy this week of fantasy football.